Rub up your engines! Hey, negative. Hey, Scotty, what are your biggest pet peeves in daily life and your job? My biggest pet peeve is people not acting professional. If everybody acted professional, the world would be a much better place. I'll give you an example. I'll get somebody to say, how early can you work on my car? And I'll say, oh, y'all bring here at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'll look at it. And then they show up two days later at 2 o'clock in the afternoon with me to work on their car. <laughs> That's one of my pet peeves. Another one is, I remember I went into... Now, we're at Ali's Auto Parts store once, and I was looking for a part for a Volkswagen. I said, do you have this? They said, no. I said, well, bring the manager. You ought to have that. And she comes out and says, oh, we don't have that. And I look up, and behind her, hanging up on the wall, was exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> Perfect example of people not acting professional. Daihatsu dude, and he says, what was the last model year that General Motor product was actually good? Well, they've been going downhill for quite some time. I say the last really good GM vehicle would have been like the late 90s. Take their 1500 pickups with the V8 engines in them. Pretty solid. I still got some customers that are driving those things around. I mean, I even got a customer driving a 95 V6 GM pickup truck, and she loves it, and it still runs pretty good. They were making them still decent back then, but anything 2000 or newer, the quality's been going downhill for a long time. They got the bean counters going. I remember reading years ago when people were arguing, and this was decades ago, who makes better trucks, Ford or Chevy? And the conclusion was that Chevy built like 20-something better percent better trucks than Ford did back then. And I guess GM got wind of it, and they said, gee, they said we make 20-something percent better trucks. And then they looked and found out they were spending 20% more money building the trucks. So what happened? GM started making them cheaper right after that. Because <laughs> I guess they thought, oh, we're spending too much money building them. Let's make them cheaper. Then they went too far. Now they're way below the Ford quality. That's a problem when you get bean counters involved in making things. All they're thinking about is money. They're not thinking about quality. Chasms. Hey, Scotty, recently I looked for a really cheap used car so I can drive myself to school instead of taking a bus. Found a 2000 Saab 93 hatchback for two grand with a manual transmission. Good buys are trash. Fun cars to drive. They're a really bizarro kind of yuppie funky car. Uh, I had a lot of customers that led Saabs. They were architects. Architects are kind of oddball people from my experience, and they seem to like those. And it's a standard transmission, which is a good idea. But it's a Saab 93. Saab pulled out of the United States a long time ago because of bad sales. No one knew how to fix them. If you live in the United States, you're going to have one heck of a time buying parts for that car. If I was buying that car, since they don't make them here, I wouldn't give more than a thousand bucks for that car. Now, if you lived in Europe, especially in Sweden, they still have parts for them. Go right ahead. But in the United States, you're taking a big gamble that car. I wouldn't pay more than a grand for the car if it ran like a clock. And then I wouldn't put too many miles on it because I wouldn't want anything to break on it because they are so expensive to fix and parts are very hard to get in the United States these days. DBS Chicago, Scotty, I'm looking at an 024 running with 227,000 miles. Owner has the records it was used in California until four years ago, now it's in Chicago. He wants 3,300. How much longer do you think it'll last? I'm worried about rust on the frame. Just get a hammer crawl under it, hit the frame. If it's solid and clunks, great. If it crunches in, it's rotten. Don't buy the stupid thing. It's 18 years old. It's got 227,000 miles. He's asking 33. I'd offer 24. See how low you can get the guy to go. They're excellent built vehicles and they can last quite some time. There's no arguing that. It's since it lived in California most of the time and you're in Chicago, if it's not rusting out, odds are it won't rust now because they were sealed pretty well even back in 2002. My 94 Celica doesn't have any rust on it because that was coated well enough back in 94. Offer them a lot less money because it's, it's old. It's got a lot of mileage on it and you're getting no guarantee. They can last a long time. I've seen them with 350, 400, but you got no guarantee, so pay as little as possible. For it. Niner Danny says, Scotty, my girl got a 2000 Mitsubishi Galante with 120,000 miles. Anything you should watch for? I wouldn't have bought that car. You're talking about a 13 year old Mitsubishi. They got weak piston rings, they often burn engine oil, and they have very weak automatic transmissions. Make sure you change the oil a lot for her. Make sure that the transmission shifts good and tell her to baby it. Drive like a maniac because when you burn that transmission out, you'll junk the car because it's going to cost you three to five grand to fix the transmission and the car's not worth that. Hopefully she didn't pay that much money for the car. I tell people, you mind a Mitsubishi, get one with low miles that isn't that old and maybe it'll last you 10 years or more and it could be relatively trouble free. But once they get to be over 10 years old and 
going over 100,000 miles, that's when they generally start to fall apart. So hopefully she didn't pay much, and if you baby it and take care of it, it might last a while. I mean, you want to drive 70, 80 miles an hour, go right ahead, but just don't try to go zero to 80 as fast as you can and wear the tranny out too quick. Max powers. My 1994 Ford Ranger 2.3 overheats when I turn the AC on. What could be the problem? Make sure that your cooling fans are working. If they're not working, that's the problem. Make sure it's full of coolant because if that's not working, that's the problem. Now, if you turn the AC off and it doesn't ever overheat at all, and it only overheats when you turn the AC on and the cooling fan is working, get a new radiator. You turn your air conditioning on. Our air conditioning systems are just heat pumps. What they do is they pump the heat out of your cabin where you're sitting, and then they move it to the AC condenser, which is in front of your car's radiator. So all that hot air is blown right in front of your car's radiator. And if your radiator is old and it doesn't dissipate heat as well, then all that extra heat from the AC will make your car get hotter. Your radiator doesn't work anymore. If the fan is working okay and it's full of coolant and your car runs fine otherwise when you don't have the AC because turning the AC on, all it does is puts that extra heat in front of your car's radiator, which has to be dissipated, and a worn out radiator often can't do that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.